Well, this sort of happened. And to my surprise, I got quite a bit of feedback from this video. Two stood out in particular since both involved using the chainsaw. Sure, I can turn both of these ideas into separate videos, but I have a better idea. Can you beat Doom using only the chainsaw? Well, that's a bit confusing to properly determine. At least to me, anyways. You want to know why? Out of episodes 1, 2, and 3 in Doom, it's only possible to clear 18 of the 24 levels using the chainsaw without cheating. If you want the chainsaw as soon as possible, you can find the chainsaw in E1M2, E2M2, and E3M5, respectively. So going off of that logic, it's technically impossible to beat every single level with the chainsaw. But I didn't say I have to beat every level with the chainsaw, so I'm just going to use it the majority of the time. With that said, let's put this challenge to the test. E1M1. The chainsaw doesn't spawn on this level, so this one's getting skipped. E1M2. This is the first level that spawns the chainsaw, so I immediately went for that. I feel like it's worth mentioning that your biggest threat when using the chainsaw only will be hitscan. They will eventually drain your health to zero, so be sure to find health and armor pickups as much as you can. This level is easy to deal with though. The enemies go down fairly quickly and they're placed rather sporadically, so you should have no problem with this one. E1M3. Another straightforward level, but this is when we're introduced to pinkies. Fighting alone pinky with the chainsaw is completely fine. Just remember that they will bite you if you're not careful. Other than that, another cakewalk. E1M4. No matter how many times I play this level, I always get lost. But I at least somehow remember to get this Megasphere every time I play this level. Disregarding my senseless floundering, this level is also easy with the chainsaw. That's pretty much going to be a running theme with episode 1, so you get the idea. E1M5. I think this is when the game introduces specters, which are basically just partially invisible binkies. And I think more hit scanners are being used as the levels go on. Correct me if I'm wrong about either of those things. This dark room was a nuisance at first, but then I remember that the exit was fairly easy to find, so I just exited the level without much issue. E1M6. I found the secret with the partial invisibility, which is definitely going to help out a lot with hitscan. Famously, the only catch with partial invisibility is that you're bound to get hit by a strike projectile with this thing. It's definitely a double-edged sword, especially when you're using the chainsaw only. I nearly died in the last room because I completely forgot that the exit was just around the corner. Yeah. E1M7. This map is just littered with hitscan. I swear, every time I peek a corner in E1M7, there's always gotta be a zombie man or a shotgunner ready to shoot me. Although I did manage to trick a shotgunner into blowing himself up with a barrel. Besides that, I'm baffled by how many zombies I spotted when editing this video. They really want me to cosplay a Swiss cheese for some reason. E1M8. This is when things get a little interesting. This horde of pinkies taught me that you really need to be extra careful when dealing with so many of them at once. I was questioning whether or not I was even going to be able to clear this level because famously you have to kill two barons in order to exit the level. I think you can understand why trying to chainsaw a baron is not a good idea. After dying a couple of times, I was considering restarting the game on Ultra Violence so I could have Spectres in fight the Barons. But somehow, by sheer luck, I managed to kill both of the Barons with the Chainsaw. So to answer this question, yes you can kill two Barons with the Chainsaw. And with that, Episode 1 is finished. E2M1, there's no Chainsaw, moving on. E2M2, the Chainsaw does appear in this level, and now is the time where I can bring up Lost Souls. Lost Souls are a bit of a joke with the chainsaw. Their pain chance is 100%, so anything you hit them with will stun them. But don't underestimate a horde of Lost Souls because they can whittle away your health if you're not careful. Besides the Lost Souls in the secret room with the chainsaw, pretty much the same shit as before, just with a noticeable lack of hit scan. E2M3. What can I say about this level, really? There's just a lot of, of binkies and imps. Some hit scan here and there. Um, I mean, the partial invisibility in the mega armor was nice, but what more can I say about this level? 
E to M4, this is when I started to take advantage of monster infighting, and now is the time where I get to talk about the Cacodemon. Typically, they're too high off the ground for you to do anything to them, but when you're able to get close to a Cacodemon, they behave similarly to Pinkies with the Chainsaw, except they have more health, and their bite is more just them using their projectile at point blank. Oh, and there was also this Baron of Hell, I guess, but since this fight is optional, you can just completely avoid them. It's a bit of a shame that Berserk doesn't affect the chainsaw whatsoever. If it did, I'm pretty sure it would be used way more often than the fists. A highlight of this level is that I was able to completely get away with bum rushing a Cacodema with the chainsaw. <laughs> Yeah, this level definitely gave me a lot to talk about. E2 and 5, I went into the secret exit because I want to know if it was possible to clear Fortress of Mystery with just a chainsaw. Fortress of Mystery. You want to know how you can clear this level with the chainsaw? Don't fight the enemy. Just trick all the monsters into fighting each other while you grab some much needed health and run for the exit. E2 M6. This one is just strictly close quarters, which is where the chainsaw really shines. Maybe that's why there's a chainsaw secret in this level, but... I mean, by now you would probably have one anyways. Just try not to get lost in the maze and don't fall for the fake exit and you should be okay. E to M7. I'm invincible and you can't touch me. E2M8, oh boy. You know, after trying this level with the chainsaw only, I'm getting the vibe that this comment is purely a joke. A joke that just went over my head, no less. <laughs> so, um, after trying like a total of like four, five, six times, I think, um, killing a side reading with the chainsaw is impossible by normal means. Or maybe it is possible and I just suck. I think clearing this level with the chainsaw might be possible if I stunlock the Cyber Demon the same way 4 Shock Blast did when he did a pacifist run of this level. But if I did, I don't think this video would come out for like another. shit, I don't know, 5 10 years? I'm not a Doom God. I'm sorry if you wanted to see me kill a Cyber Demon with the chainsaw, but for the sake of my own sanity, I'm gonna have to label this as plausible and move on to episode 3. The chainsaw doesn't appear for half of episode 3, so I'm just jumping towards E3 M5. For episode 3, I decided to up the difficulty to ultra violence for some reason, and um. So, you know when I said that your main threat would be hitscan? Well, I was wrong because your main threat is going to be hordes of tough enemies. This is definitely apparent in episode 3 because the levels just get more and more cramped as they go on. On top of Cacodemons and Barons being regulars in episode 3. So, if you ever wanted to do this challenge on Ultraviolence, you really gotta adopt a pacifist playstyle. E3M6. Although a fairly open level most of the time, the tight spaces you would typically go through really m made me regret picking Ultraviolence for episode 3. I'm not kidding when I told you you should adopt a pacifist like playstyle because there are hordes of monsters in this level. This level has basically every enemy you encountered so far, minus boss monsters. This is one of those levels where monster infighting is definitely a must. E3M7. When you're not being bombarded by what feels like a never-ending wave of enemies, your greatest enemy here will be your own memory. Even to this day, I still get lost trying to traverse this level. A little bit of trial and error should help jog your memory. And once you remember where the hell you're supposed to go, this level is fairly easy to put up with. No commentary for the final clip, just listen to the raw audio.
Yes! Oh! So, to answer the question, that's the title of the video. Um, well, it's plausible at worst because, well, E2 a mate. But other than that, it's definitely doable. Although you do need a lot of patience and luck with the Spider Mastermind. Doing this challenge was definitely something. I mean, it was definitely fun on Hurt Me Plenty, but it's a little bit hellish on Ultraviolence. So, yeah, pick your poison, I suppose. I tried playing pure pacifist for the levels without the chainsaw, but when I got into episode 3, I just went, fuck it, I'm using my weapons until I get the chainsaw. So, because of that, I guess you could sort of um, question the legitimacy of my own run. Especially when you consider that I I just gave up trying to kill the cyber demon with a chainsaw. So, um, if you're a doom god watching this, feel free to mock me for being bad at the video game and just, I don't know, do it yourself so you can rub it in my face. Well, it looks like I've already taken up too much of your time, so if you made it this far into the video, thank you for watching.